All right. Well, we're here with Bob Gurr today with Haunted Orange County and West Rockies. Uh, first things first, I guess. You're you're an amusement ride designer, an official Disney Imagineer. How did you first get into all of this? Well, Walt Disney was uh, started a new project to design an, an amusement park because he'd always done movies, always done animation. He was gathering up people uh, from around the country to do all the different aspects of, a, of an amusement park. Now, remember, he'd never done it. All the people he collected had never done it. So it didn't matter that you had no education because he threw us all into this designing all of these new things, developing it, and we had to teach ourselves as we went. That started uh, for me in the end of August, uh, end, excuse me, of October of 1954, and we opened the park very few months later in uh, July of 1955. So that meant a lot of us moved at a very high speed developing this whole idea of theme park. Was it was it initially um, the interest in engineering and architecture that got you there, or was it maybe just an interest in Disney and cartoons? Well, from the time I was a little kid, cars and airplanes were my big passion. Walt found out that I was a car body designer because I worked at Ford Motor Company when I was 20. He had a need for a little body on a small Utopia car, so I was hired to design it, but he assumed that if I designed the body, I also designed the mechanical part. I have no training as a car engineer, but I fussed with cars as a kid. So I just shut up and just kept drawing. So I got an education how to be a car engineer by the time we opened Disneyland. That's the way we worked. Now, you've designed almost countless attractions, obviously including the major ones such as the Matterho Matterhorn bobsleds, um, Autopia, and Haunted Mansion, of course, even Universal's um, King Kong Encounter. Um, how many rides have you worked on in total? Well, interestingly, over a 45-year period, I did exactly 250 projects of all kinds. Some were very small and fast. Some were very, very large and took uh, many years to do. But the interesting thing was, in almost all cases, I never had a chance to design anything over. Everything that I was asked to do had never been done before. Now, usually that scares people. But if it hadn't been done, and if other people had already turned the job down, now I was really interested Simple thing, Steve Wynn in Las Vegas wants to build a hotel, have a pirate battle show where he's going to sink a ship right on a, on a public street. People refused to do that. I couldn't wait to get started, so I got the job. Have, have you been on every single ride that you've ever worked on? I've ridden every attraction, uh, say at Disneyland, except one. The teacup attraction... I uh, did a major redesign of that in 1956 because we had a lot of problem with it. So I spent hours underneath it on the ground looking at the machinery going over my head. But I just don't like the looks of that ride, and I, so I've never ridden it. What's your personal favorite ride? Oh, the fire engine on Main Street. And I'll tell you why. Walt always uh, selected what's going to be in, uh, in the parks. But I secretly wanted a fire engine. So I had an opportunity one day, and Walt was in my office, and I said, Walt, you know, we don't have a fire engine on Main Street. No, Bobby, we don't. And a few minutes later, the accounting department phoned up and says the job number for the new fire engine project is. So I knew that he had to go to accounting to get the job launched, but we built it, and I drove it down the Santa Ana Freeway, a little two-cylinder car, all the way down to Disneyland and delivered it in July of 1958. So when people ask, that's my ride, so that's my favorite ride on Main Street. That's really great. Now, you were you know, very recently inducted into the great Disney Hall of Fame. Um, what does it feel like to be an official Disney legend? Well, you know, it, it's nice to be honored. I have a number of uh, honors of, of that type. But the real joy and the real pay is when I watch people in any park or any attraction I work on, they're having a good day and they're having a really good time and I get to watch them. That's my real pay. That's the part that in a way it impresses me more than uh, say being a lifetime achievement or a legend. That's not to say I don't appreciate that, but um, I, I don't look back as being a legend. I look back as 
boy, did I design something that was a lot of fun for a lot of people, and I can still enjoy them enjoying it. I guess, I guess the golden question that has to be asked, you, you worked with, you know, you were hired personally by Walt Disney. What was that like? What did that feel like? And I guess, what was he like? Well, that's the most common question because people are sincerely curious. They know a lot about Walt Disney, but they always say, yeah, we know about Walt, but why don't you tell us what he's really like? So basically, it was kind of two ways. And in one way, he was sort of like a god. I mean, he did Snow White. He did Disneyland. He did all these things. Um, so people were kind of nervous when they talked to him, especially uh, executives from other companies. But Walt did everything that he could to make himself look uh, very approachable. You know, like he screw up his tie a little bit and the coat didn't look quite right. Uh, kind of sending a subtle signal that, you know, to get all this work done, you and I have to talk. So we got used to that very quickly. It usually took a few uh, weeks for new employees to feel it. Yeah, that's that's Walt. That's the God, Walt. But he, but he's Walt. He's our Walt, and and we work with him, and he works with us. So the normal day is Walt would come into a room, or he, you know, he'd walk into your office, uh, you know, just just walk in the door, see what's going on. This was like normal employee to employee relationship. It never, never was a thing where here's the big boss and you're down here doing something. No, everybody's on the same level. They're all being treated the same. But there was an excitement about when Walt was in a small meeting or he'd come to your office. He always had an idea. He'd say, say, Bobby, what if? And a conversation would start where we're going to, uh, uh, you know, augment something or add something to it. So this was his way of making sure he's easy to talk to. So for us, we were easy to approach him on any subject or have any kind of a detailed conversation with no fear if we uh, gave him a dumb idea that wasn't going to work. I'm personally intrigued. Um, you know, technology has changed over the years. Um, movies, even amusement parks. Um, with developing technology, do you, do you feel that it's made this industry, um, you know, has it made things easier when it comes to designing or actually complicated things? The technology was something Walt was always uh, looking to uh, be at the latest uh, edge of technology because that would augment how you tell stories. The fact that it was so simple for us because this technology was quite simple, say, uh, 50 years ago, Today, the tools are absolutely superb. I'm sure he would be thrilled to death with the tools we've got today. But at the same time, you got to remember that as you uh, improve the technology, improve storytelling over the years, uh, that, that climb of achievement is now so steep that you do such a giant effort to make a very tiny change where before the, the track was sort of level and you didn't have to do much to make a, a, a big change. So today, I kind of feel sorry for a lot of designers and developers. It is really, really hard to make anything that's like a breakthrough. Uh, you work so hard, and all you've got is just kind of another increment. And a lot of it is kind of related to prior art in a way. Um, I'd just like to know, what, what's your favorite Disney movie? Fantasia. And Fantasia is because... If you look at the history of Walt Disney, particularly in animation, he never really repeated anything. Everything was learned in Snow White. They added that to do even more technologic, technologic improvements in Pinocchio. Then they did some really subtle uh, animation with a lot of heart and Bambi. And in the middle of all that, here comes Fantasia to do something that took advantage of new technology. That was 16, 16 track sound, by the way, in that Fantasia. This is 1940. And to do animation that is very uh, avant-garde, not necessarily animation, but was to illustrate the feeling and emotion of classical music. It was something, and uh, he loved doing it, but it never made any money for a long, long time. But sometimes that question comes up, and a lot of people will say, oh, Fantasia, that's my favorite. That's still my favorite. That, that's really great. Thank you so much for this interview. And we want to let everyone know that um, the amazing events company Haunted OC will actually be hosting an event with Bob at the center point. Um, and they've also got some really great limited prints on sale right now. 
uh, which will be signed by you and the artist, and the backdrop will be the haunted house and the actual ride in the foreground as well, correct? Excellent. That's going to be a great day for everybody. It'll be a terrific, terrific event. I can't wait to, uh, to show up there and see how it's all going to work. Well, thank you so, so much. I mean, I can't wait to be there as well. So um, make sure everyone checks out hauntedoc.com for details and how to get your tickets. <laughs> 